everyone, Jordan and Lance here with another quickie MJRL Hobby Stuff video. Today with Wonder Girl. This is this beautiful Kurupikia uh, maquette that we're gonna be opening up that Uncle Matt uh, bought at the closing of Gecko Books, Rip Gecko Books, Rip Ted Mace. Uh, and we're gonna uh, show you why these are beautiful. And I'm actually a huge fan of these over his other anime maquettes. So let's open her up. All right, let's open her up and let's check it out. So this is Cassandra. Cassie, uh, the Wonder Girl, uh, comes off the John Burns uh, original run. So let me see. She was the love interest of Con L, uh, from Superboy, if you guys remember. Oh, wow, the colors really pop when I got her out of here. I didn't expect that. I mean, I could see, but you know, this stuff was in the way. Look at that. Look at this stamp. It's shiny, metal. I really love this uh, character design too. This is that uh, early 2000s Jeff Johns T Titans relaunch with uh, originally Mike McCone, I think, was doing the original art to it. These early 2000s, Cassie comes on the scene in uh, Wonder Woman Volume 2, and she's a prepubescent girl that steals uh, magical artifacts to become Wonder Girl. Uh, then they age her up for the 2014 Titans uh, run, and they give her this kind of cool, like, halter top, uh, blue jeans kind of look. Uh, I'm not sure about the. Uh, this is a very, very early 2000s style uh, pump, but I'm not sure about that. She should have she should have just been wearing regular boots because it's going to be hard for her to kick ass. But great, great character design. Uh, they underused her, um, you know, and again, Connell, the Connell Superboy, not Jonathan Kent, but before uh, Connor Kent, Connell, the clone Superboy, she was the love interest. Uh, I'm not sure how exactly this goes in. Looks like she's holding it, maybe? Do I place this in here? Fixed it so that the um, uh, Hestia's Lassio of Truth could fit into her hands, which is good because it'd be kind of a suggestive, weird way to have her hands otherwise. But <laughs> basically, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm unbelievably impressed by this figure, like more so than any other maquette he's opened, just because I have such a soft spot for this run of comics, the 2004 McCone, uh, Jeff Johns, uh, Teen Titans comic, and this character design. I always appreciated, but I never appreciated more until I saw this figure. Like it's just genius, a genius way to homage the uh, the George Perez uh, 1980s New Teen Titans Donna Troy Wonder Girl for the next Wonder Girl Cassie. Uh, I just really, I just really think it's just great. And then the, you can't see it now; it's getting a little dark. But this, the, it just shines. It pops the stand. Like we had this weird like film paper in front of it to protect the figure inside the packaging, but as soon as it opened up, it popped. And I am. Beyond impressed. I mean, just the anatomy is great. The her, the look on her face. I am really, really, really impressed. If you can get yourself a copy of this, please do so. Especially if you're a big fan of comics and you're around our age, late 30s, 40, and or maybe even 25. If you're collecting comics as a small kid uh, in this area about 15 years ago, you'll really, really appreciate this. Uh, uh Wonder Girl. So anyway, uh, any thoughts, Jay? Awesome. Okay. Uh, what's the name of the channel? MJRL Hobby Stuff. What's the name of the Instagram? MJRL Hobby Stuff. And please follow me at Hawaii Toy Box because I post a lot of weird garbage, but I'm definitely going to post this beautiful figure. All right, we'll see you guys later. Aloha. It's like a regular American comics inspired figure. Uh, during a time uh, that I really like, my favorite run of comics is probably uh, DC books from the from '97 to about 2008 or so. Um, Marvel was doing decent stuff at that time too, but I mean, I really love that because that '97 starts with that Grant Morrison, Dale Porter run of Justice League. Then you get the Jeff Johns Justice Society uh, storyline. My favorite crossover of all time might be Our Worlds at War from 2003 um, but you know uh, Joker's Last Laugh was garbage but you have Final Crisis in that timeline as well you got you got so many great books you got uh, when they resurrect the DC sci-fi series so they start off with the Adam Strange miniseries with basketball fairy art and then they go into Ranthanagar 1 and Ranthanagar 2 
and then they go into Mysteries in Space relaunch with the, the Captain Comet return and just so much great stuff Seven Soldiers by Grant Morrison comes out at that time All-Star Superman comes out at that time uh, so many positive memories of reading books back then I even loved New 52 that's probably the end of that not New 52 I mean just 52 which is probably right that leads to the final crisis that's probably the, the like the end of that 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 golden run that I really enjoy. But Superman Batman run too. Superman Batman run the first so series. Good. The first series, the Jeff Loeb series. It's all, I mean, it's still good, but I mean, that's probably when I was oldest and most invested in the comics was you know in my twenties, in my late teens to like to my late twenties was when I was reading every week. Now I just buy books and I try to catch up with them later and I don't read it, but like. Those were the years when I when I came home from the comic shop, I sat and I read for an hour and a half of books that I and the spin-offs and the Jeff Johns Teen Titans run and uh, Green Lantern Rebirth 2004 mm -hmm. when they bring Hal Jordan back after they, that weird run where he's the Spectre and he gets to be Parallax. But Emerald Twilight is 95, 96, or is it 94? 94, I think. 94. It's a little bit before high school, huh? or maybe it's freshman year. So 95, Emerald Twilight. Something like no, that. Nah, I'm gonna say 94. I'm gonna say 94 before that. And then they, they have him in flux and they kill him off in zero hour. And that's right before that part that it really escalates. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say again, Jeff John's taking over at JLA after the Justice League of America. Cause there's that Justice League run right after zero hour where like they have Metamorpho in it when he has like the crystal rocks coming out of his shoulder and, and uh, the Crimson Fox and a bunch of weirdos on that yep. team, right? Yep. And Amazing Man too. The black guy with the green thing that had, could like absorb people's powers and just a just a weird group of people. Then first issue they had like they get into like an accident and then they 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 upscale the Justice League again because that was the problem you know uh, they call it the Detroit Era League but after Crisis they have this, that secondary Justice League run too with like Aquaman and Vibe and and Vixen are on the team Vibe and, and Commander Steel and they're all like well actually it's just Steel right Commander Steel is the original Commander Steel and then his grandson is just Steel but from the Detroit run in the 80s and they were wrong for about 10 years Justice League is the Avengers of the yeah. DC Universe why would you not have Superman on it Batman Wonder Woman Green Lantern but for about 10 years they, they were just putting B-listers in there and then Morrison comes back gets Wally West Flash Kyle Warren or Green Lantern uh, Four Can Aquaman Martian Manhunter Wonder Woman uh, Supes himself and Batman all in there and then oh and his original run when they fight the uh, the Death God and they have a uh, they have Orion on the team and they have uh, Huntress, it's just beautiful. First and the first twelve issues, Del Porter, man, will always be in my heart. I just was blown away when I saw those covers.